Hello and welcome to yet another video tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. Uh, we're going to look at motion tweening using Flash. I am using Flash Professional 8 here, and we're going to be working with ActionScript 2.0. Now, you can download a file from the site, that is www.tutvid.com. Go to the download section, you can download this tweening start.fla as well as we're going to be swapping an image in another file um, we're going to learn a bit about motion tweening and swapping images like that you can download those files from the download section of tutvid.com and the file compatibility is going to be flash mx2004 so if you have flash mx2004 or flash 8 you're going to be able to use the file or anything higher than that okay so let's get started here looking at motion tweening. Now, the easiest way in Flash to quickly animate something is using a process called motion tweening, or tweening actually, not just motion tweening, because there's several different kinds of tweening. Tweening is when you create a before and after state of your graphic, like if I were to take this wheel and move it across the stage, and then tell Flash to fill in the frames in between and make it look like it's moving across the screen make every individual frame in between just a little bit closer until it's all the way across the screen. So that's what tweening does. It takes your before state and your after state and it fills in everything in between for you so you don't have to do what animators have traditionally had to do which is where you actually have to construct every frame um, just like in stop motion animation if you've watched old very very old uh, animated movies uh, where every frame is set up and photographed and that's a much slower process of animating. With motion tweening, um, or tweening, I stop saying motion tweening, it's any tweening really in general, you can animate hundreds and hundreds of frames just with a simple click of the button. So, as you can imagine, motion tweening or tweening is a very time saving and a very, very helpful feature. And that's one reason we're going to look at it here because it's pretty essential that you learn how to tween things here in Flash. So, we are going to look at tweening but specifically motion tweening because that's one type of tweening here in Flash. It's probably the most popular form of animating in Flash because it's very versatile, it's easy to edit, and it's very easy to set up and actually start animating using motion tweening. So not only that, there's also quite a bit you can do with it as far as moving objects around, fading objects in and out, uh, rotating objects, resizing things, all sorts of stuff. Now, you are not going to be able to use motion tweening to do things like you can't set up a person starting to take a step and then finishing taking a step and tell Flash to motion tween between the two keyframes and expect Flash to make a person take a full step. It'd be nice if Flash did that, but it can't do that, not yet at least. Maybe in some future version of Flash, but I don't know about that. So, motion tweening, like I just mentioned a second ago, is really going to be used for moving things around and rotating things, and there's a lot you can do with motion tweening, and the majority of web design, um, you're going to be motion tweening a lot of your stuff. So, it's very, very essential that you learn how to motion tween. So, as I mentioned a minute ago as well, there is also this other kind of tweening called shape tweening, um, which is much different than motion tweening, and you're not going to use it nearly as much because it's pretty unpredictable. Um, although it is controllable, uh, shape tweening is a lot different than motion tweening. So, let me stop talking here, and let's actually get started making something here. Now, in order to motion tween something in Flash, you need three things to start. You need a start point, which will be our frame one here. You need an end point, which we're going to create in just a second. And you also need the object that you're going to animate to be a symbol. So here on the stage I've got four objects created to make this wheel here. You've got these four objects if you open up your library. You've got wheel one, wheel two, wheel two, wheel three, excuse me, and wheel four. We need to make these one symbol. So we can do that by selecting all four by just clicking and dragging over them. And the hotkey for creating a symbol is F8. And we're going to create a movie clip symbol here. So in the type section just check off movie clip and we're just going to give it a name. We're going to call this wheel 5. And at the end I'm just going to add the letters M, C, just so I know that it's a movie clip symbol. Although this icon in the library is an indicator of whether or not it's a graphic, a button, or a movie clip symbol. I like to make all my symbols movie clip symbols unless I need a button 
for something, but button symbols is an entirely other thing. Just for this tutorial, make our we are going to make our symbols, excuse me, movie clips. Okay, so one last thing that I need to tell you about. I know I promised I'd stop talking and actually start doing something. That was probably a couple minutes ago now. But one last thing you need to know about motion tweening is one thing that is going to drastically change the way your tweens look is the frame rate of your document. Now, come down here to your properties palette, and you can see that this document, the frame rate is 12 frames per second. That means that Flash is going to push through 12 frames on this timeline every second. Now, the fewer frame frames that Flash has to push through a second, the jerkier and the slower your animation will play. The more frame rate you have, the smoother the animation will look, and it'll be a little faster as well, but you can compensate that by just adding more frames for your animation, and you'll see how we'll do that in a little bit. It's not nearly as confusing as it sounds, but the more frames you add, the larger file size you're going to have. So if you have like 100 frames per second, you're going to have a huge file. But it's normal trade-off of, you know, either having a very low frame rate and having a very small file, but not such great quality animations, or you can have a very high frame rate and have very smooth flowing animations, but you're going to have a bigger file size. So it's that normal size versus quality trade-off that you're probably all too familiar with in saving and exporting files in any kind of graphic program. So we're going to animate this wheel here. So we have created our symbol here, wheel 5 MC. And I want it to cross the screen in four seconds. So if I look, my frame rate is 12 frames per second. So that means I'm going to come up here into my timeline and select frame 48, which happens to be this frame right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit insert keyframe. The start and finish points of your animations for motion tweening must be keyframes, not just regular frames. I can just come in here and say insert frame. But we don't want that. We want our start and finish points to be keyframes. So here's my start point over here at frame 1, my finish point over here at frame 48. So I'm going to make sure that my wheel is selected. I'm just going to hold down shift. I've got my selection tool selected and I've got my wheel movie clip selected. I'm holding down shift and I'm just going to use the arrow key and just nudge this wheel all the way across the stage just to right there. Now, actually, you know what? I'm going to nudge it all the way off the stage and I'm going to start it off the stage to the side just like that. So now, if we select this keyframe 1, we can see that our wheel's here. If I come out to the keyframe out at frame 48, our wheel's all the way across the screen. So now we need Flash to fill in the rest. So select anywhere in between, get it in between the keyframes here, and this is where we're going to put our tween. Look down the properties panel here, and you can see we have this tween drop down menu. If I select that, we have motion and shape tween. I'm going to select motion. And now the first thing you're going to notice is that this arrow comes up between both of our keyframes. This is indicating that there is a motion tween happening from this keyframe to that keyframe. Now if you try to motion tween something and it turns lavender like this, but you don't get an arrow, you get a dashed line, that means you've got a problem. You probably don't have your artwork saved as a symbol or something of that nature. Um, now if you shape tween, I can just show you here. Shape tween. I've got problems. You can see it's a dashed line, but it's green. Shape tweens are just green. That doesn't mean there's a problem. That just means it's a shape tween. Okay? We're going to work with motion tweens here, though, because that's what we're doing in this tutorial. Now, that's it. You've just created your first motion tween. So let's check it out. Come up here to Control. Go down to Test Movie. You can see the hotkey for testing your movie is Control Enter. We're going to hit that and you can see our, our wheel is coming across the screen and your flash movie will repeat and the wheel is coming across the screen now it's a wheel so we've animated it to come across the screen but it's really just floating across the screen it's not rolling across the screen so we can fine tune that there's a really cool there's actually a couple really cool options actually here in the tween properties. If I select any frame of the tween, I'm just affecting the entire tween, not just that individual frame, but the entire tween. And you can see there's a rotate option. That is going to help us a lot here with our wheel. So I'm going to select this drop down menu and we're going to rotate this wheel counterclockwise. That's just off screen here. You can probably see the top of clockwise. And then there's counterclockwise. I want to rotate it counterclockwise and just have it rotate. Let's try once. Um, 
Actually, no, you know what, let's do it two times. Two times will probably look a little better. And let's come up here to Control and Test Movie. And you can see our wheel now rolls across. Much more natural looking for a wheel. So I'm going to close out of that. One other thing that you can do with tweening, and it's a very cool feature of tweening at that, is called easing. Now, with an animation like this wheel, we could use easing if we had this wheel, well, let's say, going down a hill or something. But a lot of times you can use easing when you're placing an object on the stage. If you've got something where a bunch of elements of a movie or an intro or something are all coming together and you want stuff to come flying in and then slow down or stuff to come in slow and speed up. Well, you can use this easing option. If you add easing, your animation is going to start out in bigger steps and then get slower as it stops. Okay? Now, if you ease in you give it negative easing value, your animation is going to start slow and speed up. Now that might be better for a wheel because you think if you push a wheel, you're starting out fast and you're, or you're starting out slow, excuse me, and you're picking up speed. I knew I got that wrong. So that might be what you want to do if you're easing with this wheel here. And you can, you don't have to go all the way to 100. You can set your easing to something much less. I'm not going to set any easing for this right now though. But I just wanted to let you know about that easing option with motion tweening. So that's it. That's pretty much what you need to know to get yourself started motion tweening. So let's go and open up that other file we have, the image transition start file. I'm going to come over here into Adobe Bridge and I'm going to say image swap start.fla. Drag it over here to flash. Here we go got this photograph here that I took. I absolutely love this photograph. I'm actually kind of surprised it came out this well, to be completely honest with you. But that's not what's important here. What's important here is I have taken this photo, and you can see I've got an action script layer, which we might use, we might not use. I just threw it on, just in case we did need one. And I've got Van Movie Clip layer and Van Blurred Movie Clip. What we're going to do is transition this from a blurred photo to the clear photo. Okay, it's just two identical photos. I've just taken this one and blurred it by like eight pixels in Photoshop. And I've imported them both in here, and you can see they're both here in the library. And I've saved them both as movie clips. Now again, it's important that I save them as movie clips because we're going to be motion tweening with them. One thing we're going to edit here in the properties palette, just select anywhere on the stage to get back to your document properties. We're going to up the frame rate to about 25 frames per second. I have it set at 21 now. We're just going to up it to 25. And if you're watching the video, you're not going to see a difference between 12 frames per second. But if you're following along, you're going to see a big difference. And it's going to be pretty noticeable. So let's get started with this. We've got our blurred movie clip layer on top. I dragged it on top. The file, when you opened it, had the clear version of the van on top. Move that to the bottom, though. Put the blurred version up on top. What I'm going to do is fade this from being blurred to being completely clear over the course of 100 frames. Or excuse me, I'm actually going to do it over the course of 50 frames. So I'm going to come out to frame 50 and I'm going to insert a keyframe right there. And we are going to select the Van Blurred movie clip. Okay, actually click on it. Open up the properties palette and because it's a movie clip we have these color options and one of the color options is alpha and your alpha you can think of that as your opacity so I'm going to set this to zero so we're going to create a motion tween that makes that blurred image go from 100 percent opacity or alpha to zero right there I'm going to select in the middle I'm going to come over to tween and I'm going to hit motion tween now you're going to see we're going to hit command or control enter you can see that our photo goes from being blurry here to being clear Okay, just like that. Very nice. Now, a quick way we can bring it back to being blurry again is by clicking this keyframe here where the full blurred photo is being showed. Click that keyframe, hold down the Alt key, and click and drag, and we're going to bring it out here to the 100 frame mark. When I let go, it just duplicated that keyframe because I held down Alt, and we now have it blurred again out here at 100% alpha, out here at frame 100. So I'm going to click in between those keyframes, and you can actually right click and just hit create motion tween. So now it comes to being clear, and then it's just going to go back to being blurry again. Just like that. And the whole animation will just repeat. So I'm going to hit command or control enter, and you can see it goes to clear, 
and then back into blurry. And you can mess around with your easing options. You probably don't want to mess around with the rotate options that would kind of spoil the effect, but you can play around with them and see what it does. But that's it. That's how you motion tween. And there's a little example so you kind of get your feet wet and, you know, get into motion tweening. And you're going to find that you're going to use motion tweening all the time if you haven't been using it or you didn't know how to use it. So I hope you've learned something following this tutorial. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And uh, please go check the site out. The site is www.tutvid.com. Thank you for watching.